State University. I'm an undergraduate there. And um, I am conducting an honors thesis over the next couple of semesters. Um, I'm interested in all things visual. Um, I have a background in the performing arts and theater and music. And um, so visual anthropology is just another way that I can tell human stories. Um, I believe that visual anthropology is an area that's heavily understudied by the anthropological community, but it is a growing field. Um, I'm mostly interested in more recent developing methods of ethnography, including collaborative ethnography, self-ethnography, and ethnographic film. There's a quote by Nancy Shepard Hughes that I try to live and work by. It says, seeing, listening, touching, recording can be if done with care and sensitivity, acts of fraternity and sisterhood. Excuse me. Above all, they are the work of recognition. Not to look, not to touch, not to record can be the hostile act, the act of indifference and of turning away. And that's from her book, Death Without Weeping. So my presentation is called Not Just for Anthropologists, Artistic and Technical Collaboration for the Presentation of Field Work. Um, I'm conducting this honors thesis, like I mentioned. Um, it's a two-semester process, and this semester I'm conducting the research portion, and over the summer I'll do the ethnographic research, and then during the fall I'll be writing my thesis. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Jennifer Padico. Um, she's a professor of anthropology at Georgia State, and she's sponsoring my honors thesis. Um, the tentative title is Negotiating Identity Among Second Generation Indian Americans, a Collaborative Ethnography. And that's tentative because, you know, it can always change as you continue your research process. My proposed thesis is to study the social lives and identities of college-age Indian American immigrants in the Atlanta area. More specifically, I'd like to focus on second generation Americans whose parents immigrated from India. What, culturally speaking, enables Indian Americans to have a perceivably large amount of social mobility? What lifestyles did Indian immigrants have before moving to the U.S.? How do these backgrounds allow for academic achievement in college-aged youth? And does academic success have anything to do with being a second-generation Indian American? Um, furthermore, I'd like to explore the notion of rebellion in the context of second-generation Indian Americans. Um, how do young Indian Americans adapt to quote-unquote American culture and their parents quote-unquote Indian culture? How do they negotiate their double selves? Identity provides a narrative for the self. It's a process that informs one's perception of reality. Identity is made up of different components that are identified and interpolated by individuals. For the purposes of my project, I'll define identity not as one's distinctness from others, but rather one's connection to others. Using this theoretical background, I'd like to explore how the second generation Indian American in the Atlanta area connects to others to form his or her own identity. For instance, I found through doing preliminary research that many young Indian Americans in the Atlanta area grew up in predominantly white areas with a small South Asian population, and for many, quote unquote, Indian identities were only expressed at home. But when many of these young people went to college, their identities as Indian Americans were reformulated. For instance, many joined Indian American student uh, unions or religious organizations that gave them a new way of being Indian American. Others joined South Asian student groups, which of course have a broader range of cultural backgrounds. I'd like to explore this method of adapting and uh, forming identity through community when I interview my participants at Georgia State. Also through literature review of available articles, ethnographic interviews, and visual data, as well as through direct observation of Atlanta's Indian American community through magazines and media, I'll seek to answer these questions and form new ones about the identity of Indian Americans. The literature review I'm currently completing will allow me to focus and refine my research questions. But that whole thing is not the most important part of uh, this presentation. The most important part um, lies in the methods I'll be using to investigate these questions. Of course, a strong basis in anthropological theory and methodology will be utilized. Uh, traditional anthropological methods like ethnographic interviews, historical analysis, direct observation, analysis of contemporary documents um, will be utilized throughout the implementation of my project. 
However, the project will be highly collaborative and will end up actually being a public anthropology project. Collaborative ethnography has been defined uh, by Laster, 2005, as an approach to ethnography that deliberately and explicitly emphasizes collaboration at every single point in the ethnographic research process without veiling it from project conceptualization to fieldwork and especially through the writing process. It invites commentaries from our consultants and it seeks to make the, that commentary overtly part of the ethnographic text as it develops. In turn, this negotiation is reintegrated back into the fieldwork process itself. Basically, my project will be public from the very beginning. This is meant to foster transparency. I feel that for research to be worth doing, it needs to serve the public in some way. Um, one way in which I'm uh, going through technical collaboration is with um, Georgia State Television. I am currently the news director of Georgia State Television. We have a lot of um, access to video equipment and we can loan out uh, video equipment if you produce something under Georgia State Television's name. Then you can use our video equipment and um, produce, it'll be your own stuff, but it'll be broadcast at GSTV. So, um, my one component of this project is doing ethnographic documentary, but it's a self-ethnography method. Um, I'll loan out several flip video cameras for my research participants to document their own lives in relation to the aforementioned subject matter. Because my participants will generally be of college age and they will be highly familiar with technologies such as using the flip video cameras, um, they're, they're also small in size, the flips, and they're relatively unobtrusive, especially in comparison with more commonly used video equipment. Um, when the participants consent, I'll also film uh, the ethnographic interviews that I conduct with them. But if a particular participant doesn't give consent to be filmed, I'll use handwritten notes or audio recording devices to document the interviews. As a side note, I want to point out that I think universities should be doing much more to collaborate interdepartmentally. GSTV is one, just one media outlet at Georgia State, but we also have other resources like the Digital Aquarium, which is a place where students can go to edit, and a lot of people don't even know this stuff exists. So I think in our anthropological uh, communities at schools, we really need to be collaborating with uh, technical people to really get our field work out there. Um, so I'm going to explain briefly the, um, this is the flip video camera, there's one right here he's using to film me. Um, it basically has just a USB drive and then it's the record button, the play button, and the trash button. And then zoom, and backwards and forwards. So um, whenever the participants use this, they can record themselves and it's pretty much unobtrusive. And then when they give it back to me, it's really easy to go in and just delete the videos they don't want me to see. So that kind of, it's a good thing for IRB to uh, think about that. Um, the Sony EX1, that's just one example of like a much more complicated video camera. I'll be using this to film the ethnographic interviews. It's just one of the cameras that we have at GSTV. As you can see, it's, it's like this big and it's a lot more obtrusive. So I just think the flip video cameras are really um, convenient. There's also just wireless lavalier mics, another technical thing um, that I'm getting to use at GSTV. Um, and so that's good for sit down interviews. It really captures good sound quality. Um, in addition to the traditional written thesis, so I'll have the videos masked and then I'll have um, the written portion, of course, and then I'll also have a website. Um, I'll create an interactive website so that my data can be accessible not just to anthropologists, but to the rest of the academic community and the public at large. The website will um, also contain text and links to videos that demonstrate points made in the written portion. Through creating a visual project, I hope to increase visibility for the field of anthropology. Hopefully, the information posted on the website will be of interest to people outside of our immediate anthropological community. However, I have to consider that maybe theory-laden language will have to be toned down a bit so that the information will be accessible um, to non-anthropologists and non-academics. And um, I will include on the website a, a disclaimer that this particular set of research only <coughs> represents one group of Indian Americans and it's not meant to generalize 
or overrepresent the experiences of all Indian Americans. Uh, my friend William, uh, who's a tech wizard, is helping me to create a web page. Um, I'll be the only one who can edit the page, but there will be a section where anyone can post comments, suggest further research, or ask questions. So I asked my friend William, what should I use? And I thought about Wix, but then I learned you have to pay for this, and I'm a student, so that doesn't really work. Um, so there's one option for a website, but it is a fee, a small fee every year. But I decided, he suggested uh, WordPress.com. And uh, it's a blog site, and you can actually embed videos um, into the blogs. So like, I made this first one last night. Um, video of my presentation at the Southern Anthropological Society meeting will be posted soon. Learn what my project is about, and so he's doing that right now, and I'm going to post that uh, later today. So my goal with the project, like I've said, is to create a public anthropological pro project. I'm attempting to be completely transparent throughout the planning and implementation of the project as a method of collaborating with the public and those I study. As Joanne Rappaport from Georgetown University and others have said, collaboration is not only a moral choice for progressive ethnographers, but a choice that just makes for good ethnography. However, there's been some, uh, what's next on here? There's been some implications of the IRB about this, of course. I've been working on IRBs for like the last two months, just trying to get all the forms right. Um, I've had to adapt the language of film and video to the language of Georgia State's requirements, so I've ended up uh, having like like two or three different forms that are like two or three pages each. They're really wordy, in my opinion. They're really um, they kind of weigh you down at times. Um, it's kind of a pain to have, and I think they can be kind of confusing to my research participants because I think they're going to read through these and be like, "So what am I what am I signing up for?" But I've, I'm really working on the language and. Hopefully, um, combining like practical language with the IRB's language. Um, I've also um, I've also had to figure out. I'm basically having like ten main research participants, but if those people borrow a flip video camera and they want to film other people, what do you do about that? So I've decided to um, to have them just record the other person saying, "I'm blah blah blah." I consent to be filmed um, for this research project. And I think that's a lot easier than making my research participants carry around like a bunch of papers and have to keep up with all that. I just think it's a little bit more considerate to have them just you know, use an e easier method of consent. Um, also, I don't want to, like I just said, I, I don't want to give people too much responsibility with this because this is my research, but I'm hoping that people will get something out of it. Like it'll, it'll belong to the public at large, especially to Indian Americans, because they're helping me with my research. Um, but if they're helping me, it sort of implies that they have some sort of vested interest in the research. So um, another ethical implication is I'm also making this public, so of course people's names and images and possibly locations are going to be posted on the internet, which but I'm making that really, really clear in my IRB informed consent forms that if you sign up for this project, you'll be on the internet. Um, but I do have the option of leaving out their name entirely if they don't want credit. But some people actually want credit, like especially those who like doing film and stuff, they want credit for what they've done. So that's a consideration as well. Um, I'm also creating a Twitter account. Um, I created it and it's called Follow My Thesis, and that's just an example of like something that I could post. Um, it's we all know it's a popular form of social media, and it allows for commentary and further publicizing of a blog. In doing all of this, I hope to blur the border between the internal subject and the external ethnographer, as Marcus points out. I hope to escape the one-way question and answer dialogue that characterizes ethnography in general, as Rappaport says. Also, I hope to find new uses for anthropological research in itself. I hope that my research will not just be read only by anthropologists, but will instead be utilized by the general public. This project is more than an ethnography of a particular group of people. It's an experiment that will test the uses and implications of social science research at large. After all, if we're the only ones who read this stuff, what the heck is the point? Oh, and sorry, one more time. 
that's just, if you'd like to follow me, follow my thesis is my Twitter name, and then Kelly's Honors Thesis WordPress.com is where you can find me. <laughs>